Hey guys, welcome back to Fantasy Tips. My name is Julian and this is the final drops video of the year. This is for the second half of week 26. Players that you should probably consider dropping because they probably won't help you a lot to really round out your finals and make sure that you come out on top with that fantasy trophy. So before we get started, please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, follow me on Twitter at Fantasy Tipped. And without further ado, let's jump into the content and let's start with some forwards that you should definitely consider dropping for this week. And first on the list, I have Mark Scheifele of the Winnipeg Jets, 83% rostered. And it looks like he's not going to be coming back before the end of the season. Therefore, guys, there's no point of holding on to him unless you're in a keeper's league. And that's why he's a drop. And then I have my Manscaped Must Trim Player video, Brian Rust. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code word FANTASYTIP at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with the code word FANTASYTIP. It's time to throw out your old hygiene habits and upgrade your life. Now why is Brian Rust my Manscaped Must Trim player of the video? Well, he's been really, really, really cold as of late. He has no points in seven consecutive games and is not playing with Crosby anymore. Yeah, he's playing with Malkin on the second line, which isn't bad, but he's just not producing right now. Plus, the Penguins only play two games for the second half of Week 26, and they are on the two busiest nights of the week. So go and check your lineup if you have Brian Rust. Will you be benching Brian Rust on those nights anyway? Unless you're in a super deep league, you probably will be benching Brian Rust just because he has not been producing. So you might as well drop him because he's not going to be in your lineup anyway on those busy nights. Then I have Gabriel Landeskog of the Colorado Avalanche. For some reason, he's still 71% rostered. I know some people are banking on him coming back, you know, for maybe the last game of the season for Colorado. It's not going to happen, guys. Drop Landeskog. Then I have Michael Bunting of the Toronto Maple Leafs, 56% rostered, and he just got injured. And apparently he feels better than expected, but who knows what that means. Maybe they're still going to hold him out until the playoffs as a precaution. There's not really a reason to play this guy unless he really is 100%, which it doesn't seem like he is. And even if he does come back, he was on a three-game pointless streak, and you want guys that are producing in your lineup anyway. So if you're hesitating on dropping bunting, don't. I think it's a pretty solid idea to do so. And then I have Cam Atkinson, and odds are he's not going to play again this season, unfortunately. Would have been great for those off nights Monday and Wednesday this week, but unfortunately it looks like he's done for the year. So go ahead and drop him, guys. He's a pretty safe drop. Jumping into defensemen now, and first on the list, I have Miro Haskin of the Dallas Stars, 82% rostered. And when you draft this guy, you probably were expecting him to score some points. But over his last five games, he has zero points and only one point in his last seven games. His peripherals have been okay, but they haven't exactly been anything too great. Haskin has really not been performing lately, and if you want to grab someone else who you think is actually going to get points for you, if there's someone out there available that's, you know, getting points on a point streak, he's probably better than Miro Haskin because he's really not doing a whole lot of anything right now. Then I have Matt Dumba of the Minnesota Wild, 54% rostered. And at this point, I don't think he's coming back in the regular season, so he's a pretty safe drop. And then I have Shane Gostisbeer of the Arizona Coyotes. And for someone who is so consistent almost all year getting points, over his last 10 games, he has but a single assist. Really not great for Shane Gostisbeer. And unfortunately, while the upside is there because he does play on the top power play, he plays for a really bad team with a lot of key guys missing right now. Gossip Spear is a drop unless you're in like the deepest, deepest league where there really is nobody better available with more upside. And then I have Eric Johnson of the Colorado Avalanche, 26% rostered. And while he was good earlier this year for the peripherals and he was actually putting up points as well at that point, Eric Johnson has been healthy scratched recently for quite a few games. That's not good. You do not want someone who's being a healthy scratch on your team right now. He did play last game, got some decent peripherals, even got an assist. But I'm not super optimistic that that kind of production continues. Then I have Essel Lindell of the Dallas Stars, 18% rostered. And while earlier in the season his peripherals were decent, lately he's been quite pitiful. Does not put up many peripherals, has not been putting up points. He's just not doing a whole lot of anything. And that's why if you're for some reason still holding on to this guy, please drop him. Moving on to goalies right now. And first on the list is the tricky situation of Robin Leonard. It was announced that Robin Leonard was going to have surgery and that he would mess the rest of the year. Okay, 
The next day they were like, oh, no, 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 he's not having surgery. He's good enough to back up. They were just giving him a maintenance day. Okay, that's a pretty different story. Looks like he may have been like, okay, I'm going to go have surgery. But it looks like the team may have convinced him otherwise. The Golden Knights still have a chance of making the playoffs. It's a pretty low one at this point because they have not been winning as much as they should be, considering that they are now fully healthy. But Robin Leonard is still someone who is their starting goal. The thing is, if he is banged up, will he even get the games this week? Vegas plays three games this week, one of which is a set of back-to-backs with Dallas and Chicago. Now, if Vegas loses to Dallas on Tuesday, they are eliminated from playoff contention. They have a zero chance of making the playoffs. So does Leonard start that game? It's possible, but he's banged up, so they may opt to start Logan Thompson anyway. And then maybe if they win that game, maybe they'll start Robin Leonard against the easier team against Chicago on Wednesday. It's tough to say. I don't love having Robin Leonard this week. If there's any other goalie available, it's probably worth grabbing them because Leonard may be too banged up to even play a single game this week. Or if not, he may only play one game this week, and in which case it's not really worth holding him the entire week. So if you have Robin Leonard, consider your other options. And if there are other goalie options, if you do still need a goalie, you can grab them. Otherwise, maybe look, if you're in a categories league, if you're up in goalie stats, do you even need a goalie for this week? In which case, dropping Robin Leonard for a forward might be a smart idea anyway. And then I have the Los Angeles Kings goalies, Jonathan Quick and Cal Peterson. The reason I have them both here, not because they've been particularly terrible, it's because the LA Kings only play two games this week and they're on a back-to-back set. So Quick will get one and Peterson will get one, but they're only getting one game apiece. Those games are Wednesday and Thursday. So if you're super, super desperate for a goalie start, I guess you can hold them until then, but do make sure to drop them after that game because they're not going to play anymore after that. Then I have Eric Colgren of the Toronto Maple Leafs, 19% rostered, and with Jack Campbell back, there's not really a reason to be holding Eric Colgren anymore. The Leafs only play two games in the second half of Week 26, and neither of them are on back-to-back sets, so Campbell probably sees both starts, and that's why Colgren isn't overly valuable to me. And then I have Craig Anderson of the Buffalo Sabres, 11% rostered, and same kind of thing as with the LA Kings goalies. Buffalo only plays two games, and it's a back-to-back set. So Anderson will only get one start, if that, because Anderson is actually banged up right now, so maybe they won't even give him a start next week to make sure that he stays healthy for next season, if he even comes back next season. He's quite old. But it's tough to say. Will Anderson even start at all? It's probably not worth hanging on to him, and even if you do hang on to him, he's only going to get that one start. So there's probably better options out there, even forwards that'll do more for you than a single goalie start. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. Please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Hope you guys enjoyed the content today. Wishing you guys all the best of luck in your championship matches. And I'll catch you in the next episode of Fantasy Tips.